Do you want to accelerate your journey to create a practical database table and get comfortable to create formulas in Notion? Stick around. When you get into a Notion account for the first time, you're greeted by a few tabs on the sidebar, including a getting started page. We will open a new page to start our journey. We will name the new page Example Formula and click here so that we create an empty page without any templates. Let's use a practical example to create context to what we're creating. John is a small businessman and a freelancer. He does work for multiple clients. He wants to track all his invoices and payments so that he can meet his expenses regularly. He started using Notion and he wants to create a database with formulae so that he can keep track of all his invoices. So after creating that empty page, he uses a new block, the one with the flashing cursor, with six dots on the side and a plus sign. He clicks on the plus sign and searches for an inline table. He names the table invoices. Each column in the table is called a property in Notion. So name, tags and files are default properties that Notion creates when you create a database. The first column that he wants is a date. This is the date he submits the invoice to the client. He calls this invoice submit date. He then moves this to the beginning of the table. He then changes the name column to description. He renames the tags column to clients and changes the property to select so that he can select a single client name for that column. He wants an amount column that captures the invoice value. This will be a number property. He raises all his invoices in US dollars. Now he is readjusting slowly how each one of his columns should appear in the table. Now for this database, he wants to keep the invoice copy as an attachment so that he can refer back to this whenever it's required. So he uses the field that's already there, files. He renames this as invoice copy. He needs to give his client some time to make the payment in line with the agreement that he made to them initially. So to honor that commitment, he inserts another number column. That's called Grace Days. Now he reshuffles the columns to ensure that they appear in a logical order. Then he inserts two columns for checkboxes. The first one is called Payment Made, which is when he receives an advice from the client stating that the payment has been sent either by check or a bank transfer with the details. And the second one is when his bank shows the credit in the account. To track this, he uses another attachment column, which he calls as payment advice. Now he stops in his tracks. He needs a few columns to help him track this much better. So let's help him build all the formulas, shall we? He uses a certain naming convention for generating his invoices and he wants this in his database table as an invoice number. The invoice number is preceded by the date in year, month, date format YYYYMMDD followed by the serial number of the invoice. He wants this auto-generated in Notion. As you type in the formula, you will notice that done is not highlighted yet and the incompleteness is also indicated at the bottom. When the brackets are closed, you will find that the formula shows this as complete to accept. Now if we join the invoice serial number and the date string, it becomes the invoice number. The formula for joining is CONCAT. So let's start. As you type the formula, you will notice that the invoice serial number is a number and the date string is a text field. 
So the CONCAT formula doesn't allow you to join both of these automatically. To join them, you want to convert the invoice serial number into a text field. So you use the formula FORMAT. Till you finish putting in the closing bracket, it doesn't actually allow you to finish and say done. Once complete, you can see that the invoice number is a combination of the serial number and the invoice submit date. Let's type in another invoice submit date and an invoice serial number to test so that we know things are working fine. He doesn't really want to keep manually looking for his invoices, so he needs something like a month column. So I insert a month column as a formula field and enter the formula. As you can see, the formula can be picked up by typing in the first few characters. And the property can be picked up by starting to type PRO. Once you complete, always test your formula to ensure that it's working correctly under different scenarios. If it's a simple formula, all you need to do is just a few tests. However, if it's complex, you may want to test all the scenarios. John also wants to calculate the due date based on the number of grace days that he has given to the client. So he needs a due date column. Let's add that in. Now let's get John to add some data to feel comfortable with the information he has in his table. After entering all the information, he is comfortable that the invoice manager works fine. But to help him further, we add a filter so that he can filter his invoices by month when he wants to have a quick glance at it. Did you enjoy today's video? Do leave a comment below. If you're not yet part of this community, do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. If you like the video, consider sharing it with your friends. Stay safe, stay healthy, peace.